The electrical power system has grown from a small standalone system to a large integrated and complex combination of generating units and transmission networks covering larger geographical areas beyond national boundaries. It is no wonder that the power system has been rated as the greatest invention of the previous millennium. Integration of power system with hundreds of generators and thousands of kilometers of lines into a single operating system with split-second synchronization has been one of the greatest scientific achievements of mankind in the last millennium. The impact of a prolonged interruption in the electric power supply would be much larger than the economic loss to the energy sector alone. The dependency on new technologies has increased the dependency on power. Any disruption of power supply will increase the cost of outage and hardship to the common man. It is not possible to eliminate the loss of power to the end users. However, power system engineers always try to mitigate the chance of failures and endeavor to restore the system to normal at the earliest. The electric supply industry all over the world is under tremendous pressure to provide quality power supply at the least cost and the industry is metamorphosing from monopolist, monolithic, integrated companies to competitive smaller and restructured companies. This has brought in competition and better service to the end user. However, this has endangered normal power system operation. This has pushed asset utilization to the maximum extent reducing security margins and demanding more surveillance and quick remedial action in the shortest possible time. Such a level of surveillance demands a fast customizable protection system. There are two kinds of protection schemes, one is local protection and the other one is system protection. Special protection schemes are always system protection scheme. In certain power systems, studies of system performance may show that large disturbances on important lines or facilities can cause violent and often disastrous effects. This may occur in systems that are interconnected by long or weak tie lines, which may be heavily loaded. When this occurs, the system may break apart in a way that is not predictable and with the possible creation of power system islands having large generation to load imbalances. These poorly balanced islands may not be able to survive, resulting in a total blackout. One way to prevent this disastrous result is to separate the interconnected system in a controlled fashion, such that the resulting islands can be assured of having a reasonable balance between load and generation. This increases the probability of survival of the islands. In short, a protection scheme is designed to detect a particular system condition that is known to cause unusual stress to the power system and to take some type of predetermined action to counteract the observed condition in a controlled manner. In some cases, SPSs are designed to detect a system condition that is known to cause instability, overload, or voltage collapse. The action prescribed may require the opening of one or more lines, tripping of gener generators, ramping of HVDC power transfers, intentional shedding of load, or other measures that will alleviate the problem of concern. Common types of line or apparatus protection are not in the scope of interest here. Characteristics The type of control scheme described above is known by various names, in addition to SPS, depending on the originator, for example, special stability controls, dynamic security controls, contingency arming schemes, remedial action schemes, adaptive protection schemes, corrective action schemes, security enhancement schemes. Classification of system states and contingencies For purposes of analyzing power system security it is first of all helpful to conceptually classify the system operating conditions into system states, normal state, all system variables are within the normal range and no equipment is being overloaded. The system operates in a secure manner and is able to withstand predefined contingencies without violating any of the constraints. Alert state, if the system parameters are still within admissible ranges but the system does not anymore meet the criteria given for a secure state, i.e. it is no longer N-1 secure, the system is considered to be in an alert state or endangered state. Typically, the system reaches this state after a N-1 contingency. 
This state requires application of remedial actions without any delay in order to come back to the secure state, i.e. to comply with the N-1 rule. The emergency state, as consequence of contingencies beyond N-1, extreme or unforeseen contingencies, the individual variables that describe the overall system state could violate admissible operational limits and hence the system is considered to be in an emergency state a disturbed state. A system being in an emergency state might not be able to fulfill its function with respect to consumer supply and power transits, but is not blacked out. However, there is the risk of system collapse mainly due to the loss of stability. Therefore relevant actions must be taken immediately to bring back the system into acceptable conditions. Blackout state, a blackout state is characterized by almost total absence of voltage in a certain area of the transmission system as a consequence of tripping of generating units due to abnormal variation of voltage and, or frequency which occurred during the emergency state. Once the system enters the blackout state the restoration plan shall be activated as soon as possible. Restoration, the restoration plan aims to reduce the duration of power system interruptions as consequence of blackouts by re-energizing the backbone transmission system as fast as possible, which allows gradual reconnection of generating units and, subsequently, supply to customers. Prompt and effective power system restoration is essential for the minimization of downtime and costs to the utility and its customers, which mount rapidly after a system blackout. Any power system network is subjected to disturbances at any time and place. It is considered as one of the most stochastic system ever seen by the human beings. To enhance the power system reliability, System Protection Scheme SPS is an effective tool for utilizing the power grid during rare contingencies. This method is often employed as secondary protection schemes. SPS is also termed as Special Protection Scheme. SPS is referred with different names by different users such as IEEE as System Integrity Protection Scheme SIPS, Bonneville Power Administration BPA as Remedial Action Scheme RAS and WECC and others as SPS. SPS is defined as a protection scheme that is designed to detect a particular system condition that is known to cause unusual stress to the power system and to take some type of predetermined action to counteract the observed condition in a controlled manner. During contingency condition, SPS can be used as a tool for maintaining overall satisfactory operation of the power system. SPS can be installed to maintain frequency deviation during post-contingency and it is referred as frequency control SPS or preventing the system from voltage collapse or overloading of thermal limit and it is referred as network control SPS. In certain cases, SPS can be designed for the detection of system condition which results in overloading, voltage collapse leading to instability. This may require disconnection of single or multiple lines, generator tripping, increased HVDC power transfer capability, premeditated load shedding or other actions which may cause problem of concern. SPS initiates corrective actions in mitigating the consequences of abnormal condition, conditions without involving the isolation of faulted elements. SPS are primarily used where the protection is employed on the capability of power system instead on specific equipment protection. Characteristic of SPS are also known by other names depending on the originator like special stability controls, dynamic security controls, contingency arming schemes, remedial action schemes, adaptive protection schemes, corrective action schemes, security enhancement schemes, etc. In these schemes, depending on the type of the problem, actions such as tripping of generators, intentional islanding of the system at predetermined locations, tripping of loads will be taken. The design of SPS should be properly coordinated with the existing protection system to maximum reliability. SPS are dynamic security control systems and are designed to control power system stability in case where the uncontrolled response is likely to be more damaging than the controlled response. SPS are devised by offline analysis as opposed to online real-time control. The reason behind being power system response is too fast to allow sequential control system logic. Involvement of a grid operator human intervention for corrective action should be kept to minimum compared to SCADA EMS. SPS are designed to take special action in response to the event disturbances detailed below either individually or in combination. Transmission faults, cascading outage of line, lines, generator outages, sudden large load changeovers, HVDC pole blocking. 
The disturbance may cause following problems in power system. The solutions for the same is also detailed below. Frequency instability occurs when power system frequency varies beyond the operating limits. Corrective actions include generator tripping, rapid generation reduction through fast valving or water diversion, control of HVDC power transfer, load shedding, controlled opening of interconnection to neighboring systems to prevent spreading of disturbance, control islanding of local system into separate areas with matching generation and load etc. Voltage instability is the failure of power system to maintain its steady acceptable voltages at all buses in the system. Remedial actions include changing of generation, automatic shunt switching, control of series compensation, blocking of tap changer position of transformers, under voltage load shedding etc. Transient angular instability is the inability of the system to maintain synchronism. Preventive measures include breaking resistor, employing fax devices, reducing the mechanical power driving the generator, fast valving, disconnection of the generator etc. SPS integrates large number of switching actions in a coordinated manner. One of the essential features of SPS design is that it should provide secure and reliable communication infrastructure for exchange of data amongst monitoring, controlling and action devices. The action devices are required frequently for sending, receiving, filtering, analyzing the status and or analog measurements. For this, it is necessary to have the following requirements, devices to support communication, compilation and analysis of data, ample bandwidth for meeting the time constraints of communication, it is reported that the available SPS are dedicated for a specific power systems, systems. Dependability, security, selectivity and robustness are the basic criteria for which SPS is used. Design of SPS The design of SPS process is divided into five steps, they are, system study, solution development, design and implementation, commissioning periodic testing, training and documentation. Design of SPS The design of SPS process is divided into five steps, they are, system study, solution development, design and implementation, commissioning periodic testing, training and documentation. To contain normal type of contingencies the so-called N-1 rule is common practice in most large power systems worldwide. This concept is characterized by a predefined redundancy of power system elements which ensures a sufficient safety margin and robustness to operate the power system. Given that the transmission system loading is moderate also exceptional type of contingencies can often be handled due to this robustness. As long as normal and exceptional type of contingencies are secured by means of redundancy in the normal power system control capabilities e.g. PST, HVDC controls, fax controls etc. No automatic protection measures to preserve the system integrity and to avoid the violation of operational limits are required. However, manual actions have to be taken to re-establish the normal state. On the other hand it is not economical to design a power system arbitrarily redund redundant, in fact it is necessary to find a technical and economical trade-off between investment cost, operation cost and power system security needs. Possible reasons that might restrain sufficient redundancy in transmission systems are the power system spans a large geographical area so that the application of the N-1 rule would lead to non-justifiable economical efforts. Trends such as the changeover to a competitive market environment, i.e. facilitating large electrical energy trades across wide areas, large-scale penetration of renewables and missing incentives to build power plants at locations that consider system needs as well bring the power system closer to its technical limits. The increasing stress on the existing infrastructure gradually reduces the safety margins respectively requires new infrastructure to maintain the same level of redundancy and robustness in parts of the grid the latter might be blocked due to economical reasons and or the difficulty in obtaining permits for new transmission infrastructure projects. In some power systems an overlay structure, e.g. strong HVDC links, are in operation or planned. Due to economic reasons these strong links might not be inherently redundant. If there is a lack of redundancy other measures are necessary to contain normal and exceptional type contingencies and to provide acceptable system performance. The entity of these measures can be pooled under the name special protection schemes. Special protection schemes are often event-based and counteract on a limited number of critical contingencies that have been identified beforehand, e.g. through offline studies. 
In this regard event-based means that the special protection scheme is designed for operation only upon the recognition of a particular combination of events and is thus based on the direct detection of the event E.G. loss of a line. It anticipates unacceptable system conditions resulting from normal or ex exceptional type of contingencies and aims to stabilize the system in the alert state by means of dedicated automatic controls. It should to be noticed that also selected system quantities can be monitored and used to trigger the special protection scheme response based, but in contrary to system protection schemes, which will be discussed subsequently, the power system is not necessarily in an emergency state or close to instability, even though there might be a risk to enter the emergency state. SPS design criteria, the four main design criteria, which should be used for SPS according to Siger are, dependability the certainty that the SPS operates when required, that is, in all cases where emergency controls are required to avoid a collapse. Security, the certainty that the SPS will not operate when not required, does not apply emergency controls unless they are necessary to avoid a collapse. Selectivity, the ability to select the correct and minimum amount of action to perform the intended function, that is, to avoid using disruptive controls such as load shedding if they are not necessary to avoid a collapse. Robustness, the ability of the SPS to provide dependability, security, and selectivity over the full range of dynamic and steady-state operating conditions that it will encounter. Another very important design criteria that should be considered is, reliability of SPS. Types of instability, system protection schemes are thus designed to initiate the final attempt at stabilizing the power system when a widespread collapse is imminent. As the risk for system collapse results mainly from the possible loss of stability system protection schemes is generally designed to contain the different power system instability phenomena, frequency instability, voltage instability, transient instability, oscillatory instability. Frequency instability, the power system frequency going beyond operating limits, tripping of generators. Fast generation reduction through fast valving or water diversion. HVDC power transfer control. Load shedding. Controlled opening of interconnection to neighboring systems to prevent spreading of disturbance. Controlled islanding of local system into separate areas with matching generation and load. Voltage instability, inability of the power system to maintain steady acceptable voltages at all buses in the system, change of the generator voltage set point. Automatic shunt switching. Control of series compensation. Blocking of tap changer of transformers. Under voltage load shedding. Transient angular, instability inability of the system to maintain synchronism, breaking resistor, fax devices, etc. Reducing the mechanical power driving the generator, fast valving, disconnection of the generator, etc. Oscillatory instability, lacks natural damping of oscillations, tuning of PSS, fax devices.